This is Mark from Team How To, and we're teaching the masses how to. Hey guys, it's Mark from Team How To. Today's video is going to be about Audacity, and it's going to be a beginner's guide, more of a quick hitting how to. I don't want a lot of fluff in this, I just want to get to the points. I want to show you how to do it. If we need to go deeper into a topic, I'll just put a card up there and say, let's check this out deeper in another video. I really want to just make it kind of quick hitting, and but I want to hit a lot of the controls, how to save, how to do a lot of the main functionality, but not waste a lot of time. So if that's what you're looking for, we're in the right place. So I'm just going to get into it. Right now we've got the Audacity 2.4.2 is the most recent version. That's the one I'm using. If you don't want to see that every time you open it, click that button. So there we go. So let's start off with the controls. These are basic controls. If you had a VCR in your life or a DVD player, then you would know what these are. This is record. So you could just say, hello, testing one, two, three. There you go. There's the playback button. This is puts you back at the beginning of the clip. Let's say you were right here. Well, this button clicks you back to the beginning. This is stop like you would expect. This is pause as you would expect. And of course, play. So we hit play. Hello, testing. There you go. So more times than not, you're probably going to need audio to work with, unless you're just singing without any other instrumental stuff, but you might want to import something. So what we can do is come to File and Import. If you do the Import, it's going to drop it inside of this project. If you do the Open, it will just put a brand new project open in a different window. So there you go. That's, just, that's the difference there. But for our case, let's do the Import. And I'll just do import audio. I'm going to import some of this free music I just downloaded. It's uh, royalty free and free to use, so we should have no copyright issues. And there you can see we can come in and work between the two files. Now, if you're going to save this, you want to save the project so that you can come back and, and still have everything, be able to manipulate it in the future, then you would save the project. And if you're saving the project, you can file. And for the first time you save it, you want to obviously do save as. So we do project, save project as, and then this brings up, this just tells you that you're saving it as a project and not actually saving it as a, an audio export. So you can see these .AUPs, those are audio audacity files. So if I save it it's going to, and I go to reopen it, it's going to show like this so I can change and manipulate, do what I want. But if I wanted to export the actual audio, that's different. That's not, that's not to save the project, that's exporting audio. So we come into export. And then we can do it as a wave or OGG or or whatever we want there, the options, and as an MP3 if we want. Now, up until recently, it was actually version 2.3.2 and above, they include the lame MP3 encoder. And if you don't know what that means, it just means that before that, it wasn't legal for them to to box it up and ship it out with that because of some copyright things but since some things have changed now they're able to do that so if you got a new version you should be able to just go in and use an mp3 as an export but if you have an older version you'll need to go out and find the the lame dll's import those and it's just a simple install but well, maybe we'll do a video on that but hopefully nobody needs to do that anymore so it shouldn't really be an issue so there we go so now we got it we can export it if we want it to be the audio and we can save it if we want to come back and work on that file next i want to talk about recording your voice or a guitar, just whatever you're going to do. I'll we'll go ahead and get rid of this for now. Now there are a couple of approaches here. We could either play the track, we could record while the other track is playing, or we're, we could record and not have the other track playing. And if we want to record and not have the other track playing, we need to come up here. Well, in either case, you probably want to check this to see how it's set up. So I went to Edit and in Preferences. When you come down to Recording, you come in here and you can see play other tracks while recording overdub. If you've checked that, the other track will play. Let's say you're doing an, uh, a karaoke version of something and you want to put your voice with it. You would definitely need this, that way you could hear the other one while you're doing that. Now if you're going to get into doing those sorts of recordings, you need to understand something about latency or latency calibration. Latency is simply the time it takes for the mic's input to reach the CPU system and actually print it out to the screen. So if I'm inputting something, it's not going to be in the exact same time as the recording up here because it's got to hear that and then it's got to hear me put it in and then it's got to happen. So depending on your machine and depending on how far you are from the microphone, all these things can have a slight variance. And then there could be up to uh, several milliseconds difference, which doesn't sound like much, but it can be some. Don't worry about that right now. I'll put a card up here to a video that explains how to calibrate your latency so just know that if your timing is off which it probably will be unless you fix it because audacity doesn't adjust for that by default if you pay for an expensive 
software, they will sometimes do that usually, but Audacity does not, for now at least. Now that we have some audio to work with, let's uh, let's get into some of these controls. We'll start up here with these. Probably the most commonly used is the selection tool, and it's what it sounds like you select with it. If I wanted to get to a certain part of my audio, I could go to a minute 15. I could do that that way, but I can also use it if I left click and drag, it's going to select a section. So if I just want to select that section of the audio so I can add an effect or, or cut it and put it somewhere else. Let's say I want to just, for whatever reason, I want to take this beginning part. So I'm going to left click drag, I'm going to do a uh, control X, I'm cutting that. I'm going to put it down here at the end, I can do control V for control Victor, and boom, there you go. So now I've just basically moved it. Now let's just say I wanted to take and uh, split something, I'm listening to my audio and I say I want to split this off right here, and I want to maybe put this one back in the middle, I don't know. So I could do control and I, and then what that does is it makes a split here. And so what I can do then is take this time shift and I can left click and move this over and you can see it's left that hole where that shift was. Now if I wanted to grab this out of the end here, I could take copy some of that. Control C would copy it if I just want to leave a piece of it and I can drop Control V right in there. Then I'm, let's say, okay, I've got these gaps here. Let me go ahead and take this out. So I'll just move this one over and I'll move this. And you can see the yellow line pops up. It sort of clicks too. That's kind of nice. There you go. And so now if we started playing it, you could hear that it's all confusing. So there you go. So there's those. There's a couple. Those are important ones. The zoom tool is pretty much what it sounds like. You zoom in and zoom out. One thing that's uh, noteworthy, the only thing I can see about it that's noteworthy is if you, as you left click in, it gets bigger and uh, more detailed. And if you right click, it goes back, 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 back the way it was. So there you go. So that's pretty much all there is to those. Something as we work our way across, if you wanted to note how much input your microphone was getting, you could hit this click to start monitoring, and that will give you a good feel as to how, how well your audio is being received. There's a couple of sliders here. This is the volume for recording. If I bring this down, 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 you can see that it's getting uh, worse and worse as far as uh, if I maybe I have a reason to turn it down, but you know, there you go. And then this one is also the the output, playback output. And what's interesting about this one is it controls the entire computer. So if I was to raise this up to 452, you see I'm at 52. If I go down and look at my audio, it's at 52. And if I switch this down to 329, I come back up here, it does not change it. But if I change this one to 40, and I come down here, it's at 40. So there you go. So this one will affect that one, but that one will not affect this one. So very cool. Next thing, let's work across. There's your simple stuff like cut and paste, those type things, which I kind of do. I use keyboard shortcuts, but let's just say we wanted to select a section. And then in case I don't remember that Control X works, I can just hit the cut button. Or if I wanted to copy, I could just click this, which would be Control C. And of course, Control V or paste would be this one. And those are commonly used. Yeah, you'll probably use them all the time. Next thing over we got is the trim audio outside selection and it is what it sounds like so we have a selection here and it's going to trim everything off on both sides of that so i'll just hit that and boom everything else is gone within this selection only for that section we're working on obviously it's not taking everything away now, if i wanted to undo that i could click this button or Control z which is what i usually do so there you go it brings it back and then this one does the exact opposite is the, that one it cuts out everything in it so there you go. If you want to get rid of the selection, you do that. And if you want to keep it just the selection, you do the other. Now we come over here, we have another version of Zoom. Let me control Z and we'll get that back. And of course, this one just zooms. So if we click this Zoom, it just zooms in, zooms in. If we click the minus sign, it zooms out like you would expect. Now the ones that are a little more useful, in my opinion, are this one and the next one. And this one is the Zoom selection. So if I want just this zoomed to be full screen, I hit click. And now I've got that section alone. I hit Control Z, it puts it back. But let's just say I wanted to, let's say I've zoomed way in on whatever reason. Um, now I could hit the, this basically shows the entire project fitting on the single line in single view. So that's great. Now what I did while I was just talking because I wasn't thinking about it is the third version of Zoom, which is using your scroll button on your mouse. If you hit the Control button and scroll, let me do one thing first though. I want to do a bigger selection here. So I'm going to do, a selection that this this big. Now, if I hit my control button, watch this little hand that's popping up inside my cursor arrow uh, circle. 
if I'm on this side, it's going to zoom everything from this line. And if I'm on this side, it's going to zoom everything from this line. It doesn't matter how far in or out I am, but what it's going to do is zoom. Watch, I'll stay on the left, and it's going to zoom this section of it. I'll stay way over here, and I zoom. I'm just scrolling my mouse, and it's zooming to that spot. And I zoom back in by scrolling the opposite direction. But if I hit Control and I was on this side, it would zoom this portion of it. And like I said, it doesn't matter if I'm over here. It's zooming right there to the right side of the selection. So there you go, and you can get all the way in as tight as you want. It's control, button, and scroll is what that one is. Now, the only other controls I think are going to be hugely important are basically your setup here. You want to make sure you have the right microphone. Just drop this down, and you can see, pick from the microphone that you're using. That's the one I'm using. Now, your outputs, whether you're going to be recording in mono or recording in stereo for two channels. And then finally, the output. Um, proper, which is, you know, if you're using a specific set of speakers you want to go out through or you just want to use the default or whatever you want to do it, listen to it. And if it's not coming out where you expected, you can change it. Or if you're doing something else where you've got your headphones plugged in and you want to be able to listen, you can switch it to that so you can hear, say, for instance, if you wanted to sing, but you wanted to be able to hear it enveloped in your ears and that way you could sing along with the track that way. So you have several different options there. That's pretty much all of the controls that I think are super important, at least that are on the main page. Now I'm just going to go over a few of these less obvious features. So let's say I wanted to start playing from anywhere. Let's say I want to start playing. I can just come up right here and click on this. And it's gonna... There you go. It just starts playing wherever you do it. Now if I just want to play a specific part of the track, I can left click here. And notice I'm on here where this green arrow comes up. Now I can left click and drag it. And then it's going to play that selection. There you go, and I can stop when I want. You can see this is already targeted to do that, so if I hit play, it's going to start right there. So that's excellent. Next thing I want to do is show how to make this stereo track into two mono tracks, in case you wanted to work on them separately. So what we're going to do is select the whole thing, come down here and, and select split stereo into mono. Very simple. Now you could do work on either of these two mono tracks. And then if you get all done and you decide you want to put it back together, we can use Control A if you want to control it. If you want to select all of them that are on there, if you have more than more than two and you want to just select them separate, you can control click. So click one, hit control button, click the other. So once they've turned white, they're selected. Come up here, we click this, and we go make into a stereo track. There we go. Now it's basically back to where it was when we started. Now let's just start adding some audio via our microphone. We'll show how to use multiple tracks and do some different things with that, moving things around. What I'll do is let's just assume this was a long audio track full of guitar or whatever, and we're going to sing along with it. So in this case, what we might want to do is have a metronome so we can keep our time better. Uh, I'm going to mute this so we don't hear this when we play it back, but let's do uh, a metronome. So we hit Tracks, Add New, Mono Track, and then from here we're going to go up and generate a rhythm track, and that's their version of that. Now if you look here, these defaults are fine for what we're doing. If you want to know more about this, I'm going to put a card up here that goes deep into how to do this metronome thing and what all these settings mean. But for now we hit OK. And we'll see. Now see this has made this metronome track. I'm going to scroll in a little so you can kind of see it a little better. So you can see all of these. One, two, three, four. There you go. So let's add a little uh, audio with our microphone. I'll do the same again with the tracks. I'm going to track, add new mono track. And now I'll be able to listen to this one as I'm singing along, or in this case I'll just talk along to the beat. And that way we could add it in as we go. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There you go, you get the idea. So now we've got this in here, we've got that. If we wanted to later on release this and put these together, we could go in and mute this out so it wouldn't be exported with the rest of it. Okay, now I want to show you just a couple of housekeeping uh, tips here. So you can see things are getting out of hand here. We can't see the end. We can't see this and that. We can either hit this to see the whole thing, or we could just do Control F, and you see that brings everything into view that way. And let's say this was wider, and this was wider, whatever, like this, but we wanted to see all the tracks together. Let's say we had four or five more tracks. No matter how many tracks we put on here, we can do Control Shift and F, and that brings everything up into into one viewable column. So Control F gets the uh, the horizontal and control shift F just the vertical so that's cool and uh, if you wanted to say minimize absolutely you could take this down like so well, let's just say if you wanted to you don't necessarily care to see it you can just minimize each of these and do it that way let's do one last little experiment we'll do some audio and then we'll do some minor corrections to it and show you kind of how to 
put things together in the end and all that. So I'll do this and I'll just record. Let's make a nice intro to our video and um, get done with it. I threw um in there so we could take it back out so I can kind of show you how to splice some stuff out. So let's stop that. Let's go ahead and zoom this in. Should have done that the other way. And now I'll show you how to take out spaces, ums, that sort of thing. Let me just zoom in a little more. There we go. And the um should be somewhere through here. Um. So let's see what this sounded like here. Video and um. Okay, cool. So let's just, all we're going to do is highlight just the word we know is um. Then we can simply hit the delete key. And when we play it through. Ooh, and get done with it. There you go. So it's, that's super simple. Now here we have a little bit of noise. I threw um in there. So see, so we could either straight up delete that, or we could do noise reduction on the entire file. I have a video, and I'll post how to do noise reduction up here, just so we don't have to get into more stuff. But it'll show you how to get rid of that. But if you're just wanting to get rid of extra space, simply to highlight the spot you like, left click, and drag, and then hit delete, and that goes like that, easy. And then let's say you have a little too much at the beginning, just highlight delete no big deal now let's just say we wanted to get delete that end off but we wanted this to fade out so what we can do is go in here and highlight that go to the effect go down to fade out and boom you saw it kind of just zoom right in there that's really uh, all i had in mind i just wanted to give you some basics how to get started i've got a lot of other videos you want to check those out i'll have a playlist at the end here and uh, i hope you learned something please subscribe if Hey, did you remember to subscribe?